Oh, you caught me playing with my robots here. Hello, New Green is up today. There have been a bunch of smaller wattage power adapters released, and I decided it's finally time to catch up on the lower wattage offerings from Ugreen and see if one will knock out the 20 watt adapter I like from them. The grass is always greener, or is it isn't greener? I guess it depends on who you ask. I can never tell. It all just looks like grass to me. Okay, fun aside, in this video, I will be testing each of the power adapters against the claims to see how each one stacks up. I hope the robots move or articulate or something neat and fun. They don't. Oh. They don't even plug in, in form. I think we're done here. See you in the next one. Novelty aside, I'll be putting them through the normal testing phases with the others. I don't know if they've done something amazing here or if it's a cash grab. You will find out that and more later on. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos are detailed, so ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured, and in this case, I'm only comparing them to themselves, since there are so many. If you want more information, see the links on the channel page. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. First up is this Ugreen 65 watt three port PD GAN fast charger robot CD361. I will go through the testing process with this power adapter. These adapters are newer on the market and represent some growth in Ugreen's power products on the market. It's on because it got lots of requests. It comes in a big box. Yes, I struggled to open the box. They do put the little robot name inside. It has a peel and stick on the screen face to make it look like it's on. I wasn't sure what to expect from these, but it looks like the feet come off to reveal the plug poles. I was hoping they'd be operational like they show in the online product photo in robot form, but that's a distraction. Is it a good power adapter is why I am here. The user manual for this charger is not bad. It gives the usual modes of operation and some basic specifications about the performance of the product. With the higher wattage, this charger should be able to handle lots of laptops, tablets, and phones for charging, as well as handle some lower power devices like camera battery chargers, watch chargers, and similar devices. It does have the USB-A port, which is welcome for non-PD capable devices. Plenty of those out there still. This charger being at the 65 watt power level means it has quite a few modes of operation. The adapter has fixed output voltages of 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt power delivery or PD modes limited to about 3 amps or so. These values are fixed so the adapter will hold this voltage when this mode is requested by your device. When switching to the programmable power supply mode or PPS mode, the device, like your phone, can request a different voltage from the adapter. In this case, up to 21 volts and 3 amps maximum current. This means 25 watt Samsung fast charging is probably the maximum from one port. Around the back of the charger, I find that it has a few marks on it. The TUV mark is a safety listing. This means this device was tested to comply with a host of standards relating to the conductivity of the plastic, the thermal performance, and the breakdown of components inside under dangerous conditions. The six in a circle indicates compliance with DOE 6. I'm going to test that. A square on a square means double insulated. There are a few other logos on here, but I won't be going over them in this video. They relate to other compliance tests and they're a bit beyond the scope of this short video. Overload is testing when a device safely shuts down when too much power is being drawn, like in a short circuit or a fault condition. In the case of this power adapter, it shut down at 75 watts, which is a safe limit. The device recovers after removal of that fault. Since this power adapter has multiple ports, I can check the renegotiation of power delivery between the various ports. No surprises here that each plug and unplug triggers a reset of the other port. It is actually quite a bit slower than I've seen from newer adapters on this one. Not sure why. This can interrupt charging sometimes and it can be a bit annoying. There are very few chargers on the market that don't behave this way though. Okay, so how do I test these things? The first piece of equipment is a power supply, but this time an AC power supply. This supplies a very clean sine wave AC signal to the next piece of equipment, a power analyzer. This basically looks in detail at the power that would be coming from your wall socket and how it interacts with the power adapter. This measures right at the socket, so it doesn't take into consideration losses from other parts of the system. The power adapter or device being tested gets inserted next and then that plugs into the USB trigger board. This board lets me force a USB power delivery mode for testing. Then that connects with a four wire connection over to an electronic load simulator. This lets me set any power level I want without worrying about loss in the wires between the USB board and the load tester. That four wire approach is also used with the power analyzer. So now I can plug this in and check the idle power consumption. 
Normally this would sit for a while, but for the sake of video, I am moving this along more rapidly. Then I can plug in some USB test load and set a power level. 10% is 6.5 watts, so I could go for that. Then this process will continue until all of the data points are collected leading into the data table. So how did this one do? Here is the overall data for this one. The voltages look good. The ripple looks very good. The efficiency is very high and the power quality score is as expected on the lower side, but perfectly acceptable for a device in this class. I discreetly leave out some things I will go over later in the video, like the overall power usage and the idle power usage. But don't worry, it's still here, just in one place, not several. This adapter did not meet the DOE6 requirements. For the advanced users, here is a screen capture of the data with this adapter at full load. So I've picked and chosen pieces of the information for presentation. There's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Next is the Ugreen GAN 65 watt fast travel charger with a UK, North America, and Euro plug, CD296. The unique thing about this charger is the interchangeable plugs. These do look proprietary, but they hold well at least. Here is the data for this power adapter. The charger is very similar to the robot GAN, but it does meet the DOE6 efficiency requirements. In the green corner is this Ugreen fast charger 65 watt CD275. This adapter is in a white case, but it is still a 65 watt sheep. Here is the test data for this power adapter. The charger is very similar to the robot GAN, and it doesn't meet the DOE6 efficiency requirements because of the efficiency. In the other green corner is this Ugreen 30 watt USB C PD GAN fast charger CD359, the other robot. This charger is still growing up and hasn't quite made enough oil changes to be a 65 watt power adapter. Here is the test data for this power adapter. The charger is a little lower wattage, but it still doesn't look bad for this watt class. This one does meet the DOE6 efficiency requirements. Damn, we got too many green corners. The Ugreen Nexode Mini 30 watt charger CD319 is up next. This tiny power adapter packs a lot into a tiny case, covering almost all the modes of operation, but just at lower current levels. Here is the test data for this power adapter. This charger has a little more noise on the DC output, but it does meet the DOE6 efficiency requirements. Next is the Ugreen USB-C Smart Charger 40 watt CD243. This charger is really a dual 20 watt charger in one case, so it doesn't have a lot of modes of operation. Here is the test data for this power adapter. The charger also doesn't meet the DOE6 efficiency requirements, and in this case, it's also for the lower efficiency. Last is this Ugreen Nexode Mini 20 watt charger CD316. This power adapter has less modes again, since it is only a 20 watt adapter, but still not bad. Also, it is tiny. Compared with the non-Nexode 20 watt, I still prefer the old one. Here is the test data for this power adapter. The ripple voltage was higher. It seems these subcompact chargers don't do amazing here. It does, however, meet the Department of Energy 6 requirements. Time to compare the data, in this case, only to themselves, since I have 20 to 65 watt chargers within this video and quite a few of them. When comparing the idle data across this lineup, the lower wattage ones have better idle power usage, but probably not a surprise to anyone. The larger ones have better filtering though, so cleaner power usage at idle, but a measurably higher number of watts. On the idle graph, the lower wattage chargers all cluster up. These are very small amounts of energy, even if plugged in all the time, so not bad. The 65 watt chargers are a little more power consumption heavy. These are really about aggregate, not individual users. One doesn't matter at all, but a billion of 0.05 versus 0.22 becomes an issue. When comparing the overall data from these adapters, they're all the same. They are basically the same type of power supply and the basic same construction inside, so no surprises here, the performance is basically the same in every case. On the average power consumption graph, the power moves around because these have different watt values. The Robot 65 watt adapter is actually the most efficient of the bunch, but this is a tiny difference. Again, these are really all the same. I did not compare them with others. Let's talk about value and a few other things. These robots represent relatively poor value, so you are being ripped off. Is that a surprise? They're novelty items. At least the performance isn't worse. I like that Ugreen tried to do something unique, but I would have preferred if they were able to be robots and plug in fold out plugs in the back or something. On desk and actually functional as a charger would be a huge step up. 
A 30 watt Nexode single port charger represents excellent value and all around is not a bad charger. It has a safety listing as well as low idle power consumption. This is rare, but this one gets a go for it from me. Finally, something not awful, thank goodness. It's cheap as chips, and yeah, some of them are gonna break. It's a bargain product. Another new chart. Yep, there's always more to add. Here are the weights and sizes for each of these power adapters. As expected, the higher wattage ones are heavier and larger. The 30 watt Nexode really shows how small and lightweight that adapter is though. I could nitpick. For that size, the sacrifice is the voltage ripple being higher. It's just the data that isn't an opinion. I ran out of time to get thermal images, but nothing of note there. So what does that all mean? These are chargers, and they all technically work. I describe and measure them in detail. After that, you decide if one of these is for you. These are tested and on the database. Now 20 total Ugreen power adapters. I'll see you in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.